If you ever wondered how to hide your video contents from the clients and keeping their actual addresses away from the clients so that they cannot download the files but still they can view the video files from their browsers so called video streaming you are in the right place and stick with me to find out more Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here and in this video we'll see how to video stream in Node.js so that our video contents are kept away from the clients and also they cannot download the files. So to have a total overview, in this picture we see how a video element in an HTML file works. So we have a video element with a source and the thing that happens in the behind the video element will make a request with these headers which are request URL, request method and another header which is the range that includes the data for the exact range of the video file that the video element requires at that moment. So the request goes to the backend server and the backend server handles the response data according to the request data and opens the requested file and sends it back as a partial file with some specific headers which are accept ranges, content length which is the length of the content which is being sent at that moment and another header which is the content type and the response status is 206 which is equivalent to the partial content. So this is a total overview of what we are going to make in this video. So without any delay, let's go into work. So to get it started, I'm going to create a node project using npm init. So I'm going to say npm init dash y for accepting all the questions that, that is going to ask me. And if I hit ls, I'll see that a package.json file has been generated and also I have a test.mp4 file which is a video file that we are going to stream later. So the next thing I'm gonna need to install the express and nodeman. So I'll hit npm install express and nodeman. I'll hit enter and wait for the process to be done. So it will successfully install my required packages. Next I'm gonna create a index.js file so I'll say touch index.js and in here I'm gonna create a simple express server so I'll hit const express require express I'll say const app is equal to express and at the end I'm gonna say app dot listen I'm gonna provide a random port for example 8000 and I'm gonna pass a callback function and inside this I'm just gonna simply console log listening on port 8000 so the next thing I'm gonna create the slash route so I'm gonna say app that get I'll pass the slash as the route and a function which has the request and response parameters and it will return a HTML file which we are going to create right ahead. So I'm gonna say rest.send file and I'm gonna provide the dunder their name plus index.html. So that's it for now. The next thing I'm gonna create a file and I'll call it index.html. Inside this I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. So I'll say a video with the ID of video player. I'll provide the width attribute. I'll pass 650. I'll provide controls attribute and I'll pass the autoplay attribute and as the source I'll pass the src attribute as the slash video and type will be video slash mp4 
And with that, our work here is done. The little next thing that I'll need to change is go into the package.json file and change the start script. In the scripts section, I'll say start and I'll pass nodeman index, which is going to run my index.js file. So I'll hit save and in the terminal, I'll say npm start. So this is going to listen on my port 8000 and if I go hit localhost port 8000 I'm gonna see the exact same HTML that I created. So of course this is not going to play any videos so the next thing as you might have guessed we're going to create the slash route API which is going to open the video file and return it as a stream video with those specific headers. So going back to the code, in my index.js file, I'm gonna create another route for slash video. So I'll say app.get, this time I'll pass slash video. Again, I'll pass another function which also has the request and response as the parameters and inside this is all the magic that is going to happen i'll say const range is equal to rec.headers.range this is exactly the header that the video element is going to send as the range that it requires at the specific moment so if the range header does not exist in the request we should return an error so i'll say if not range rest.status is going to be 400 and send a text as error as a response so if i go check the slash video route in the browser i should get the error as the response because normally I won't be sending the range header. So to test out the API, I'm going to say localhost 8000 and slash video at the end. So the response that I'm getting is error because I'm not sending the range header. So this is working fine and the next thing i'm going to grab my video file so i'll say const video path is equal to test.mp4 in my case it can differ for you so the next thing i am going to need the file size because as we saw in the total overview picture one of the headers that is going to be sent back to the client is the content size so in order to get the video file size, I'm going to need the fs built-in dependency. So I'll say const fs equals to require fs. I'll say const video size is equal to fs.statsync. I'll pass the video path and I'll grab the size attribute. So the next thing I'm going to need to declare a variable for the chunk size which is the exact chunk that the video element is requesting. So in my case, I'm going to return the chunks as a one megabyte per request. So I'll say const chunk size is equal to 10 power by six. So as we saw, the video file is being sent back to the client as bytes. So detecting from the range header that is coming from the client, we are going to detect our start and end bytes. So the range header coming from the video elements is something like bytes equal to some random numbers, which is going to be our start byte. The thing we should do is to grab the number from the incoming range header. So I'm just gonna say const start is equal to range dot replace. And I'm gonna pass a regex and replace it with an empty string. So in my regex, I'm gonna pass backslash d slash g. And the thing that this regex will do is replace all the 
digits that are not numbers into an empty string. So the result will be all the numbers that exist in a string. So I'm gonna convert this whole thing into a number and with that I'm going to detect my start byte. So the next thing I'm going to detect my end byte. So I'm gonna say end equals start plus chunk size. But the problem is that because of the chunk size my end byte can be more than my actual file size. So I'm gonna wrap this thing into a mass.min function and pass another value as the video size minus one. So this will return any of these values that are less than the other. So with that I have detected my end byte. So next I'm going to detect my content length. So I'll say content length which is equal to end minus start plus one to avoid returning zero as the content length. So next I'm going to declare my headers and I'll say const headers which is equal to an object and inside this I'm going to have content range which is equal to bytes start to end slash the actual video size. The next header will be the accept ranges. So I'll say accept dash ranges, which is equal to bytes. The next header will be the content length, which is equal to the content length that we calculated. And the last header will be content type, which is equal to video slash mp4. And that's it for our headers. The next thing I'm going to say rest that right head and I'll pass 206 as the status as the second parameter I'll pass the headers variable that I just declared. Don't worry all the steps has been done and the only last thing that we need to do is to return the chunks as the response to the client. So two lines of code. I'm just going to say const video stream is equal to fs dot create read stream and I'll pass the video pass as the path and the start and the end as the options. And next I'm going to pipe the video stream to the response. So I'll say video stream dot pipe and I'll pass the response and I'll pass the rest as the response. So if I hit save and go to Chrome and hit refresh, this is not going to work. And the error that is giving is the value of the start is out of range. So after debugging, I noticed that I passed two extra quotation marks to the regex in the replace function and if I remove them and hit save and again go back to the chrome and refresh this time I see some changes happen and if I hit play this is going to start playing the video. So this successfully started streaming my video file to the video element and the thing that I'm going to test is that I go back to the terminal and I'm gonna stop my server that is streaming the video. So if I go back to the video element and if I switch to the network tab and in here I see that the video request has been sending continuously to the backend server and because this is not getting any response it is surely going to fail and if I go and start the server again, I see that the responses are coming back and the video will continue to play. And also if I try to download the video, I won't be getting the exact file. And also if I go to the 
elements and in the source which is the localhost 8000 slash video and I open it in a new tab this is going to re return some error this is not 100% secure and of course some hackers will find a way to bypass this and get the files and just a simple way would be to grab all the chunks and stick them together and return it as a file which will be the exact same file that is being streamed but you can integrate this into your code to keep your actual video contents away from the let's say simple clients that don't have any clue about how video streaming works so with that i hope you get the idea and and again also there are more to learn there are more to add to this project if you have any questions just go ahead and ask me in the comment section and also if you want any other features to be added to this project just go ahead and again ask me in the comment section and i hope you learned something new in this video and please do like and subscribe and thanks for watching hope to see you in the next videos